so good afternoon uh, from india and if people are joining us or have joined us uh, from different parts of the world then good evening to them and good morning today i will be speaking with neha kashyap who is the mother hun at uh, the gray matter and we will be speaking about the pitching tips and best practices uh, in this section we'll also explore on what and what has changed over the years about pitching and the tips and tricks and uh, how can a bd team help support the firm to uh, grow their business and help in rain making a uh, little bit about neha uh, with over a decade of experience in the legal industry uh, neha has uh, thrives on strategic business development communication and marketing and also does a lot of training initiatives and uh, she from an in house bd head of a top tier law firm in india to starting the gray matter in india she's come a long way Uh, welcome neha and thank you so much for joining us today and giving your time thank you thank you for the introduction and thank you for having me uh, i'm very excited for the session um, it's one topic that that truly truly gets me going um, so yeah looking forward to the chat so uh, before i start i would want to brief uh, the listeners and neha to you also that uh, for the first 20 minutes we'll be discussing about the uh, pitching and the uh, best practices and the next 40 minutes will be a round table where our listeners can ask you questions and then we'll be closing the session so let me start uh, neha with the first uh, question and um, so with your and my total experience in the industry which is approximately 30 years uh which is a long time uh, and the roles that we have played as uh, played as bd professional in curating pitches uh, can you tell us what is the actual can you tell us like points or can you tell us what is the actual good approach or the correct approach to approach and uh, uh, to uh, do an rfp or an approach an rfp uh, starting with what is an rfp according to you so rfp basically stands for request for proposal or requisition for proposal that um you know corporates send out to law firms or individual lawyers to understand and uh, evaluate the expertise the law firms or the individuals bring to the table um this could be for a particular project or for impaneling these firms or individuals with the corporates um for any uh and every query that that, that um you know they mm. they have on the legal side so mm. i think that's that's the in in a nutshell that's what rfp is um and like you said we've we've clearly seen the process evolve right over the over the last uh, 15 years or so mm. Mm. um i think one a few some of the most important uh, sort of things that we definitely swear by um one would of course be to read read and read the rfp clear uh, you know very very carefully um adhere to the timelines um you know if if it's a specific question that's been asked it's very important that um as bd professionals we try and um, you know urge the, the lawyers to make it as crisp and as specific as possible and um very important to adhere to the word limit that's that's specified on the rfp because rfps have now um you know gone from just being a, a large sort of yeah. document yeah. where you tick boxes um to asking extremely specific questions and i think that's something that that we truly need to keep in mind hmm. um, i think it's also very very critical that we stay up to date with the technological innovation that the that the firm has undertaken mm. it could be on the on the due diligence side it could be on the you know the compliance management side the contract management side um extremely critical and important to state those um on on our rfp um and not only because you want to give a uh, the sense of the advancement that the firm has gone through but also um making sure you're telling the client or the prospective client that um it is something that um you know you have their best interest in mind mm. as far as time is concerned and as far as cost is concerned so um so i think those those two are extremely critical and the third point is i think um good for the for the firms that you know they have people like us uh, who 
uh, have the ability to understand the legal nuances, but also have the ability to creatively present it um, to make it easy for the reader on the other side. Because, mm. I mean, you'll agree with me that long gone, uh, those days are long gone when it was only GC's uh, reading or the legal counsel on the other side reading the RFP, right? Got it. Uh, it could be someone from the sales team, it could be someone from the marketing team, the business team, the finance, procurement, it could be any team reading yeah. it. Mm. And if you were to deliver a verbose, you know, heavy worded document to them, um, it won't hold any sort of, uh, it, they, it won't be able to hold any attention, um, you know, in, in their eyes. So I think- no, absolutely. Important. And I think to end that, very critical for firms to ask for feedback. Um, mm. dis- whatever the matter may be, has if your RFP has gone through, not gone through, extremely critical that you get feedback from um, your clients as to why did it go through and why did it not go through. Um, it, it only helps us evolve, right? We yeah. live in the world, so. No, absolutely. So now, if I summarize your uh, points, it will be technology. Um, a word limit, which is very important. It should be sleek, uh, innovative, but specific. I mean, use your sectors and use your practice areas well, but don't uh, go beyond it. I mean, nobody wants to read so much. And the third is, of course, feedback, feedback which you, uh, we can ask them, why did you take the mandate or we cannot uh, and improvise on it. So, yeah, that, that's really a very good summary of uh, four points, I think. It will be useful for people who are listening to us. Um, that leads me to our next question, Anaya. Um, so in the last uh, decade or 15 years, uh, you, you, you have seen the change. Uh, along with, I've also seen the change and you've seen the change. Right. And uh, so what changes have you seen uh, for pitching? Uh, and uh, why do you think the change has come? I mean, there are a lot of factors, from, but from a business development perspective, why do you think the change has come and what are those changes? Um, so I think, um, like we said in the, in the first question, I think um, the entire, you know, uh, intent with which a law firm uh, does the RFP. One uh, was you know, where um, something is being seeked. So an RFP comes to you and you pitch for some work, for some specific uh, questions. Uh, And the second part is, I think uh, both firms and lawyers have become extremely agile, um, Mm. extremely proactive, Mm. given that the, you know, the competition is on the rise. um, When when competition rises, there is also competitiveness on on cost factors. Um, So I think, the need to stay agile and stay ahead of of the curve is extremely important. So, um, you know, you're doing pitching on two fronts. One where someone has reached out to you, so you're being reactive, and one where you are being extremely proactive. You're sending pitches out even before you've you've been asked for it. So I think um, one massive change uh, that we have probably experienced in the last 15 years is that, right? Like it's not just reactive, it's also proactive. Mm. Um, Second is of course, uh, you know, like we said, competition and cost, um, they go hand in hand, right? So if if you are with the rise in competition with the number of firms that have, uh, if you were to just look at India, you know, um, 10, 15 years back, you knew the names of probably the 10, 12 firms that were, in the Indian market. And today it's very difficult to limit that number to even a 30 or a 40 firms because mm. uh, you know, you've know you gone beyond the, the tier one cities and, and you go into the smaller cities, you look at the sector sectors that uh, that are evolving in India as well. Um, it's, it's, it's a given that you know, uh, innovation on technology, cost, uh, innovative pricing, um, and and uh, you know just staying ahead of of your competition is something that comes naturally to the lawyers. So I think those have been the changes that that mm. we have clearly experienced. Mm. And also, especially on the seeking side. So when a when a corporate is seeking an RFP, mm. um, what has clearly changed is that um, they're not doing it to uh, put a tick on a box, right? Mm. They are actually wanting to read what your specific 
yeah. niche as a firm or as a lawyer uh, to make sure that uh, their query that comes to you is very niche and specific, like mm-hmm. like your practice. So I think uh, that's been a massive change as well. Mm-hmm. Um, so yeah, I would I think that would probably sum up. Yeah. So I think it's a two-way process, like from the client and the law firm side, both uh, competition has increased. So that will be why. I mean, why the change is there because competition has increased. Pandemic is there. Digitally, things have changed. So legal teams are expanding, uh, as you said in your in our first discussion, first point of discussion, that it's not only the DCs who are reading the RFPs now; it's also uh, so it's also the business people who are reading. It's only not only the business people, but DCs are also reading. It. So that that difference, I think, what and why is covered there. Great, great. So uh, now an important question here: uh, Give us some uh, good tips and tricks to make a great pitch. So that when our when a client looks at it, he's bowed with it. So in your experience, can you just give us and uh, how do we connect that beautiful looking pitch or a proposal um, uh, in a rain making segment of a partner? For example, there is a salaried partner who's been a salaried partner for some time, and he wants to become an equity, or he wants to grow the business, or or for a standalone law firm or a small law firm, a standalone advocate. If he wants to increase his clientele, what are the tips and tricks he should use in a RFP or a pitch proposal uh, that you could suggest and it will help us increase the revenue? Oh, so I think, I think uh, like we covered a couple of them. I think one is the presentation. Um, hmm. I think hmm. it's it's extremely important to uh, stay crisp and to the point. Uh, hmm. Given that that we are in a pandemic sort of situation for the last hmm. one and a half years, hmm. um, it's extremely important for the firm and the lawyer to be able to showcase their digital avatar as opposed to the heavily worded documents that yeah. they would carry Absolutely. or the multiple documents that you would send across to a client where you know I, I mean you will agree right like we've basically seen uh, how firms have completely disregarded our point of not sending a firm profile a deal sheet a cv all of these things separately right um, Absolutely. so the digital avatar has i think i think uh, become extremely important yeah. um, to you know to stay crisp and to the point mm. um it's it's very important to break the monotony of words using mm. infographics, flowchart, whatever really sits well with you. Mm. Right? Um, and I think um, innovative free fee structures. Mm. Um, don't just give out fee structures just at the beginning when you're when you're yeah. sending. Yeah. It's important yeah. that you communicate what you bring to the table mm. and ask them what you what they need from you uh, as opposed to just completely loading them with all the information in one go yeah right absolutely and i think when when we say that it is connected to rainmaking i think it absolutely is you cannot alienate the two um like we said um with law firms becoming extremely conscious about having BD teams and marketing managers in place, mm. um, it enables, it, it's an enabler for the lawyer or the partner uh, in charge to be more agile and proactive. So mm. use your, uh, you know, ability to identify the area that you want to grow in or the sector that you want to grow in. And then outsource or just you know rely on the good senses and creativity of your bd manager or your or your marketing manager to um, help you identify the people you want to pitch to and also then um, you know have uh, take their creativity on just how your document is looking yeah, so absolutely. it's extremely important and i think it, it cannot be alienated uh, yeah. while the lawyers have to focus on the legal lawyering skills uh, at the end of the day, um, it only helps to have BD managers and marketing yeah. managers in place who can truly enable you to become a much more uh, sort of valuable rainmaking partner, right? Mm. Because, I mean, Jay, you've seen how in the last mm. 15 years, um, it's not about you spending time at a law firm for 15 years or 10 years or 12 years for you to get to partnership. You have to prove 
Yeah. You know, you have to prove the value add you bring to the table, um, you know, so that you are made partner or you are given equity for a reason. And that reason, more often than not, is one of the rainmaking skills. And let's accept rainmaking skills lie in very different buckets. It, it's not just about going networking, getting a client, converting them, and, and you're sorted. It could be about so many different aspects of content marketing, uh, you know, networking, uh, just writing, right? Um, and just in, in terms of just uh, being able to uh, have thought leadership pieces in place. Absolutely. So many of those aspects. So I think, yes, cannot be alienated at all. Yeah. So Neha, see, uh, I feel, I feel the way you're talking right now, I feel it. And, you know, it's, we, I've been in law firm for so long and you've been in the industry for so long. It's so true that rainmaking is not only about going and networking and getting the client. It's also how you present, right? How, what you're pitching. Uh, if you're talking to a power sector client and you start talking about m and I mean, he will not be interested. He will be more interested in what the regulatory aspects of the power sector in the country or some other country which is interested in investing or some power companies investing in India. So I would say, and also I think, you know, deadline. Deadline is a very important thing for, uh, is a b- biggest yeah. tip. I mean, if you meet the deadline, and it's so ironical that you said it's not that the time you spend in a law firm will make you a partner. That's not true. But when it comes to time on deadline, that's the most important thing. So there are two contradicting things. It's just Absolutely. How you use the time well to show the right pitch to the client. Uh, thank you, Neha. That the, these uh, tips and tricks are really useful, and I hope our listener uh, will be using it uh, in future. And uh, I hope that. Uh, uh, it it really fructifies in what they want to do. The clientele increases. Yeah. Um, that leads me to my next question. Um, and this is one of uh, uh, a question that I wanted to ask you because you have been a great friend. You've been friends for so long, but I've never got a chance to ask you officially. And on this platform, I'm going to ask you, Nia, from uh, heading a BD team and a BD function at a top tier firm, to curating the gray matter and like, you know, you are an entrepreneur today and uh, you are running it so well in the country. Uh, What is the personal difference you have found uh, while making an RFP at uh, AZB when you were there and now uh, as a mother hen of the gray matter? I'm very excited to hear your answer. (laughs) So I think, I think um, both, both have massive pros and cons. Yeah. Um, I think being internal at a at a firm um, has a massive pro uh, mm. because in our experience, the insight you have as an internal person mm. is way higher, right? Yeah. Um, yeah. Lawyers, your lawyers, your partners heavily rely on your expertise and your creativity. And trust. Um, trust absolutely, me. absolutely. Mm. And you have the undivided attention of, um, you know, your time, to focus on that particular RFP, right? Um, I think as a third party, mm. uh, as an outsider, as an agency that's been, um, say, retained by a law firm, um, we are seldom privy to uh, the entire RFP. Mm. So there is very little context setting that's that's done for us as, as outside agency. Um, I think this narrative is currently applicable only in India. I mm-hmm. think the, the narrative outside of India in, in the Southeast Asian market, um, US market, I think has has completely undergone an over, overhaul. Um, yeah. Third party agencies completely take care of, of uh, the RFPs. Um, but I think in India, we, we are yet to get to that, yeah. yet yeah. to get to that position. So I think we, we get to work with, on, on very limited questions we are very uh, briefly told about what industry we are referring to and what pointers they would like from us. Um, so there is very little context setting and there is very little, uh, you know, sections of those yeah. RFPs that we get to work lucky, on. Lucky, lucky. That I would say is lucky. <laughs> but I think the good part uh, that, that we feel is that we, um, given that we work with uh, a wide range of law firms, um, I think we get to see very different ways of marketing, mm. different mm. ways of 
of, yeah. uh, you know, we have to adapt ourselves to uh, the different law firms or the different partners that we are working with. And I think that is that is a huge learning for us. Yes. So I think that's primarily the difference. But I think I will com- go ahead and, and, and take the liberty and say that um, it is... Uh, you can't take away the importance of an internal BD person. Absolutely. It's extremely crucial. Um, And having said that, I will also go ahead and say that I am completely, uh, we we love what we do at at the Grey Matter, what we're able to do. So I think I won't take away uh, that. And I will also not forget how important our role was when, you know, three out of the four people at Grey Matter were at at the same firm. So I think... um, yeah, I think I think those are the sort of pros and cons. Yeah. Spoken like a true lawyer, Neha. You've <laughs> given us very pers- good perspective. Uh, and then now something little bit uh, off the topic, but connected. Uh, do you think uh, law firms today uh, in India, especially, you think uh, are gender agnostic, especially when it comes to BD teams? Absolutely. I think uh, that's evolved as well. Um, mm. It has massively evolved. Mm. And I think I think firms have, um, you know, accepted and, and evolved uh, from the from the fact that rainmaking as a skill is gender agnostic. Absolutely. Right? Yeah. And and uh, I think there are obviously more gender agnostic policies in place. Mm-hmm. Um, and there is nothing holding us back. So uh, that's a massive change and it's a very positive change. Um, I think we've always, in India, we've always had lawyers like, you know, Zia Modi, Pallavi Shroff, Dina Vadia, who've proved time and again, and, and for decades, right, that, yeah. that relationship building is gender yeah. agnostic, right? Yeah. Um, and, and the next generation lawyers, if you, if you look at them, uh, you know, you look at a Sonali Mahapatra, you look at a Pritha Jutha, uh, Nilufar Lam, Nisha Kaur Oberoi, and all of them have been leading by example, uh, redefining the fact that it's completely gender agnostic if, yeah. you, if you know that this is where your skill lies, yeah. right? Um, you can be a great lawyer and you can also be a great rainmaking lawyer. And um, I think these women have proved it to us yeah. time and again. So I think absolutely, absolutely the the teams, uh, the the firms, the lawyers themselves, I think, have um, completely opened up to the fact that gender has nothing to do with with the ring making skills. And I think yeah. that's a great change. Yeah, and the Labor and Laws uh, Act. I mean, the the laws are changing. I mean, there is six months mandatory maternity leave. So the firms and the companies and the government is supportive of women uh, rising. It's not only defined by how many children you have, but it's also defined by if you can manage both. And they are managing well. And I Absolutely. give I give so much credit to the firms as well to support the Absolutely. women today to go up the ladder. So that's great. But thank you, Neha, so much for your expert views and all the questions uh, I've asked. Uh, thanks so much. I think this discussion was very, very fruitful and for me as well. Uh, and uh, thanks for all your advice. Uh, I now open the uh, session for a round.